Okay, we're going to look at the um, traffic citation over here, and uh, we do get a little hint here. It says the rounded corners on this form provide graphical hints about the boundaries of the entities represented. And if I scroll down, uh, the instructions are created data model with five entities. So they give us another big hint there that there are five entities. Uh, and it's obvious when you're dealing with people that uh, we're going to have a person here as an entity. And we need to uniquely identify each person, and that's going to be the driver's license number. And it determines all of those things. Um, there's a, a state field for the driver's license as well as for the person. So we need to identify that a little bit differently, I guess. Um, and then we have uh, sex and uh, birth date, height, height, and eye color. Okay. And just to make this a little easier to read, we're going to drag in everything except the first line here. So we'll do that like about an inch or so. Okay. Uh, then we have a driver's license, which is something separate. Uh, I'm sorry, vehicle. So uh, vehicle. And they're going by license number here instead of the uh, VIN. And that determines state color, year, make, model. They call it type, but usually it's called model. Um, and they didn't fill everything out, but uh, we need to allow for that. So uh, we do have a VIN. Uh, we have a registered owner. And we have an address field for that. And that one looks a little ambiguous i would think for an address you'd have that subdivided into city street address city state and zip but that's the way it is on the form so that's the way we'll do it then we have a violation date and so we need uh, something that will determine the violation date um, and the date alone will not do it The location will not do it. So it looks like we're going to have to do a surrogate key here. So we will have a violation number. And that determines the, you know, we said we're going to use just as date field. So we'll do date, comma, district. And I'm not sure what detachment means. I'm not familiar with that as it relates to uh, driving. And then we have uh, location. And we're going to do this uh, miles, direction, city, comma, and then the uh, road. And it says we can have the next one looks like it's part of the previous group, but it does say violations. And so we could have more than one thing there. So you could be speeding and writing text while driving. So I think what we have is a violation number, which I misspelled, that will determine multiple violations. So, uh, And then we have an officer, and we'll call it what's called on there, personnel number. And um, we will do just a first name and a last name. It looks like those last three checkboxes are part of, they're related to the violation, I think. 
So if we put those up with violation number, looks like I misspelled violation number again here, then um, so these would be Boolean fields. So we'd have warning, let's put yes, no. Um, we'll call that repair. Um, And then what are we going to call the last one? Um, immediate correction. And I don't know if they keep track of signature or not. We can make that a yes, no field as well. Okay. So um, it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, we do have this. We have violation number and possible multiple violations. And the way we're going to fix that is the way that we frequently fix it is just by pulling violation over to the other side. Okay. Okay, so I think that takes care of all our dependencies. And now we want to go back and look and see if anything that is on the right side can be determined by anything other than what we're calling our key over here on the left. So. Uh, it looks to me like all of these are determined by the driver's license number and nothing else. So I think we're good there. Uh, the vehicle license, um, all of these are determined. Now, you could argue about the VIN. You know, if you know what the VIN is, you can probably figure out um, probably these other four things here, the color, the year, the make, and the model. Um, but you'd have to have access to, I don't know whose database, the manufacturer's database or something like that. So... Um, we're not going to consider that a dependency. And um, the next one is violation number and date, district, detachment. Uh, and this is a specific location and what needs to be done. And I don't think there's anything else that determines those. Uh, personnel number determines first name and last name. And then the violation number and the violation uh, determine nothing except for themselves. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go here. We've got our tables. Uh, what we should also do here is this is in the uh, ER diagram chapter, and so we'll make an ER diagram out of this. And I think what I'll do is I will not include that in the video. I will create it and then uh, start up the video again later. So we'll pick this up after I complete that. Okay, so I took the information uh, that I created earlier and started designing some tables and some entities for an ER diagram. And um, so this is basically just exactly what I had before. It's just in a different format. And I've assigned uh, types uh, to everything here as well. Uh, all of the fields are visible in all of these right now. I'll just pull down a little space here at the bottom to show you that we're seeing everything. And now it's time to link them up. And uh, here's a hint for when you're doing this. Uh, if you have something here that's not linked to anything else, uh, then you miss something somewhere. Okay. So I know that the driver is associated with the vehicle. Um, and what I need to do here is I need to uh, associate the registered driver uh, with the driver light with the driver's license so uh, this person could have many vehicles but a vehicle is only going to have one registered owner so this is going to be the many side uh, registered owner and we're always going to do one to many down here and we want to click on registered owner on the many side first and then click on uh, ID number up here okay and if I select this uh, it will or just pause the mouse over it, I guess. Uh, it will highlight the fields that are linked. It'd be nice if it, if it took the lines directly to the fields that are linked as well, but it doesn't do that. So now the question is uh, the cardinality over here. Uh, this is part of the ER diagram, so don't forget to do this. Um, so we've got the one to many, which is what the left hash mark is for here for the one, and it's what the crow's foot is here 
is 4 over here. And um, what we're saying here is with the hash marks, by default, it says they're both required. So a driver is required to have a vehicle. Uh, if you have, basically, they're saying if you have a driver's license, then you must have a vehicle. Uh, and if you're a vehicle, uh, you must be registered to somebody who has uh, a driver's license number. Uh, that part's correct, um, but not everybody is required to own a vehicle. So what we need to do is we need to uh, edit this relationship. So let's just uh, double click on it. And uh, we want uh, this down here. So the it's mandatory on the vehicle side. Uh, it is not mandatory on I got that backwards. Uh, I'm looking at it in the order I've got it up here, but they've got them reversed down here. So uh, let's turn this. Okay. So this says a driver does not have to have a vehicle. It's optional. But this hash mark right here says that a vehicle does have to have uh, a driver uh, that is the registered owner. Okay. Now let me lower this part here. I'm looking for my two-headed arrow. There we go. And actually, I think I just close it. There we go. Uh, now I need to be able to link some other things in here as well. And when it's time for me to do that, I realize that uh, there are some things here that I can't really link together. Okay. Um, now, if I have a violation, that needs to be linked to a person. Now, I was just going by the rounded corners on the violation form. And so I didn't think about looking other places, but this has to be related to a driver. Okay, so we are going to have to add another field here, which would be the driver's license number, whichever abbreviated DL number. Okay, so uh, let's edit this. Let's double click on it. And I need to go to the bottom and I need to add uh, one more field. And it's going to be the DL number of the owner. And we said that's going to be an int. Okay. And I hit enter. So I get this extra line down here. And let's uh, delete it. And now I have uh, a driver's license number and a driver's license number. So uh, a violation is only going to have one driver, but a driver can have many violations. So we've got a one to many going on there. So let's click on the ID number and on the many side. And then we click on the one side last. And if I pause the mouse over there, uh, it'll tell me uh, which fields are related. So now, um, the, ins the, the one that's closest to the table here, the entity, uh, means it's the one side. And over here, uh, the crow's foot means it's the many side. And then we've got the cardinality. So this one here means that a violation has to have a driver. Um, uh, this over here means that a driver has to have a, a violation and a driver does not have to have a violation. So uh, let's uh, double click on that relationship. And let's go to foreign key here. And we want um, an optional on the violation side. Okay. And we can close that now. And we can close that. So now that's optional. So uh, we're saying here on both of these is a driver does not have to have a violation. The driver does not have to have a vehicle, but a vehicle has to have a driver and a violation has to have a driver as well. Okay. Now, um, where does the personnel come in? Okay. Uh, well, the personnel is going to be associated with, they'll be the person who wrote the violation. So we need to have a link between the violation and, uh, this one. And, um, this person can write more than one violation, but a violation is only written by one person. So we need to have a link in here. So I got to open that one up again. And I want a link down here on the bottom. I want a personnel. Got to click again. Which is an int. Okay. And I always hit tab at the end and I shouldn't. Uh, so let's delete that. Uh, and a couple of things here about the text fields. Uh, what I'm always doing on the text fields here is I'm just going with the default of varying character 45, uh, unless there are a couple of things that are obviously uh, going to have a fixed length. So for direction, I 
was assuming like north, south, east, or west, or maybe northeast, north, uh, northwest, uh, so on. So you have two characters at the most. Uh, and for state and zip code, I'm always going to do state as a two character field, and the zip code will be a nine character field. If you only use five of the nine, then we just have some extra space left in there. Okay, so now I can link these two, and I'm going to link the um, personnel number, and that's going to be the many side. So click on this, click on personnel number for the many, then click on personnel number down here. And so this is my foreign key. And um, we got the relationship right, but we need to check on the cardinality. Uh, and does an officer have to have a violation? No, at least not when they first start, they don't. Uh, does a violation have to have an officer? Yes, it does. So we need to change this on the violation side to, to optional instead of required. So let's uh, double click on the relationship. And on the violation side, let's go down to foreign key here. On the violation side, uh, that part is not mandatory. Uh, let's close this. Okay. And we got this one sitting out here all by itself as well. And this is uh, related to... Now, this one's a problem um, because one violation can have... Or one violation number can be associated with more than one violation. So the violation number alone is not going to be, uh, is not going to work here. Uh, and since this can be, uh, text, that makes for kind of an ugly key field. So, uh, what I'm going to do here to fix this is, uh, I'm going to make a surrogate key. So, uh, let's double click on this. And I'm going to go down here and we will put, uh, violation. Uh, item ID. Okay, so I distinguish between a violation and a violation item. Uh, you can have many of these for one violation, so that's the difference. Uh, this is no longer the key, um, but the violation item ID, our surrogate key, which is going to be an integer here. Got to click twice. And that is going to be our primary key. And we can get rid of this one down here again, delete selected. Okay, so I can close that. And um, can I draw? I can't drag it up here. I have to drag it in the other view. And it, you, should, you want to have the key listed first. So I'm going to double click on this again real quickly. And we're just going to take violation item ID and we're going to drag it up to the top here. Okay, and now we can close this. And now we're going to have a one to many relationship. A violation can have. Uh, many items associated with it, but an item is only associated with one violation. So, uh, again, one to many. The many side is going to be here. And um, the key is going to be, or, uh, it's going to be the validation number is the foreign key. And link it to validation number up here. And just to keep our lines a little bit nicer here, uh, that's what we're going to end up with. So, a violation uh, can have many violation items. It must have at least one. And a violation item uh, has one violation, and it must be related to a violation. So uh, that is what we would end up with to um, solve the problem on the traffic citation.